the first artist to perform under the banner of Indian Summer Festival when we launched nine years ago. And so it's very fitting for us to be here tonight with him. Um, since that moment when we met, Mohammed has performed for heads of state. He's worked with jazz, jazz ensembles. He's worked with orchestras, hip hop artists. And uh, in 2017, he wrote a concerto for the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra, which was acclaimed. A critic writing about his latest album in Jazz Views says, the way Mohammed Asani has manipulated, caressed, and amalgamated so many different styles under the watchful rule of his sitar is nothing short of mesmeric, a unique and surprising record that will take you places you've never been before. Welcome to Wayfinder, and please, a warm welcome for Mohammed Asani. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Siresh and the whole team at the Indian Summer Festival. Uh, I know that I wouldn't have been able to do these things without your amazing support and inspiration. And um, uh, I really appreciate that, that so many ideas have um, rebounded between us. And like, uh, thanks for all your support. And I hope you'll get to talk more about um, our journey. Look today. forward to it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. So I'm going to uh, present my first track, which is called Awakening. And this uh, track is based on uh, Rag Ahir Beherev. Uh, but again, like in this um, uh, project, I'm, I'm trying to um, respect the, the traditional norms, but as well as uh, going out and trying other aspects of, uh, of the rag. So I uh, hope you like it. This is Awakening. And this is a morning rag.
Wow. So I feel awakened. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because you said it's a morning raga. And of course, it's morning somewhere, yes, always. Yes, absolutely. Um, but the fact that ragas have moods and times of day is something quite beautiful. Um, and I was thinking that one of the things in your work and uh, what's so interesting about all this is that meeting of musical worlds. And um, I was thinking also that someone who did that a lot is worth acknowledging uh, given that Pandit Ravi Shankar's 100th year birthday was just a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely. And I think he was, you know, really responsible for the sitar coming out as this ambassador of Indian classical music. Absolutely. And of course, then meeting the Beatles and George Harrison getting into it. Yes. Sort of brought it more into the consciousness of the Western world, but it was... A huge contribution, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, a great um, uh, person who had not only played sitar, but brought many other concepts and pulled other energies into the music of sitar and the repertoire and that helped to uh, expand the the i mean one of the thing was that i heard uh, pandit ravi shankar sitar concerto a long time ago and i okay does this happen like oh mm. this is sitar and an orchestra all playing together and uh, and that was uh, uh, an inspiration. Like years later, yeah. I wrote, you know, with John Oliver, I wrote a concerto. So, uh, so those are all these things that uh, there are countless things that Pandit Ravi Shankar did in many different aspects uh, that has inspired. And another thing that I must say that I was extremely fortunate um, to attend a college where uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar very briefly in his career taught. Oh, okay. So that the college that I went to uh, is called Dartington College of Arts. Uh, and uh, it was actually founded by Rabindranath Tagore and a philan philanthropist called Elmhurst. So the Dartington is supposed to look just like Santi Niketan. Gosh. So here I was uh, traveling from Pakistan to learn piano. And when I get to Dartington, there was Pandit Charda Sahai. There were people from um, uh, Indonesia teaching gamelan. And there were teachers, uh, you know, who specialize in African music. Uh, and also a lot of contemporary Western music. So I, although I had a, like a small window, I was going to learn Beethoven and Mozart, but it was like huge. Mm. All these influences have helped me to, mm. you know, think beyond, yeah. basically. Amazing. And so what worlds do we get to see in your next track? Do we get to hear? Okay, this next track is called Serendipity, uh, which my daughter Arzu named. <laughs> it's easy to make tunes, but it's really hard to name them actually <laughs> <Yeah>. sometimes. <laughs> So uh, this, this one has a bit of jazz flavors and uh, in this I played two sitars. Obviously you'll hear one of the sitars on the track. And um, uh, this is uh, also based in a rag Madhumanti, uh, which I use mostly. Uh, most of the time in this type of music, when I'm using a rag, I do uh, break the rules because uh, I like breaking rules. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as it's a good as job it you're keeping two sitar lengths away from the That's right. I'm keeping, that one, we are yeah. keeping two sitar lengths. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's true. Um, so, so there we go. Now, I will need to tune for each number. Um, so, that takes me a, a moment or two. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was beautiful. Nice bass line. Oh, thank you. That was, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah that was really good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really interesting what, to sort of hear all the influences you spoke of before in, in your musical training, in all the journeys you've made, and then hear that in this. Yeah. You, you keep going all over. I mean, Wayfinder is a good name, right? You're, oh, you know. Again, uh, uh, thank you for suggesting this name. And uh, it really shaped my thinking for the narrative for the project. So. Oh, well, thank the Polynesians. They were the ones who, who called Wayfinders the, the astronauts of our ancestors. Um, so, but I learned that from you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but it's it's um, you know it's funny when you think of sitar and you think of the influences. You go to the Mughal courts. You go to uh, mystic poetry. You go to Hindustani rags. But you rarely think of Ariana Grande. Um, and and I believe that was the inspiration for your next track. How did yes, that happen? Uh, yes, yeah. because I I kind of knew that I wanted a new sound palette for this uh, album, this project. Um, and um, uh, I drive my daughter to school every morning. And um, so I was driving Arzu to school, and she loves and she totally controls the stereo <laughs> in the morning. Uh, I have no, I cannot well. play any of my Vilayat <laughs> Khan or Ravi Shankar, no <laughs> chance. <laughs> so she played, uh, and often she has a very good, good taste. I mean, yeah. she's a really brilliant taste, and she's a big critic of my music. If I play a bit <laughs> out of tune, She'll say that that's out. Of, that's not good. Okay, yeah. so uh, what happened? She played this uh, one of my favorite tunes, which is um, from Sound of Music. Um, my favorite things. I've always loved that tune. So when I heard a version by Ariana Grande, it's called the Seven Rings. Uh, I just loved the beat and then the the lower end of the bass and the whole ambience. And I thought, yeah, this song is already beautiful. But this hearing with this kind of this modern um, lift is really nice. So I told my daughter, said, thank you so much. I'm going to make a track using the, the accompaniment that I heard, like inspired by that kind of like vibe and the, the beats and the grooves, so basically. And then uh, when I, uh, so I recorded this album um, with my producer, who's a wonderful, uh, superb, fantastic producer. Like I really- uh, Adam Sheikh, yeah. Adam I mean, Sheikh, of course, quite, so quite grateful. Quite legend, yeah. Grateful for Adam uh, to bring his expertise and uh, very amazing person. So I, uh, upon arriving at Adam's um, studio late in, because you know, it takes nine hours to get there, nine ten. So like late in the at night, I'm there, and uh, so and he had told me that like I have, we had talked about what kind of sound palette, and he said he has a huge library. So I play him this song, and then he plays me about like uh, fifty or sixty different drum beats. So then I choose from those drum beats. And that was a process for many of these things. So if I wanted a, a certain bass sound, you know, the, the library would open, we will listen to the, you know. So that's how so this song. So you picked from a library of sound. A huge library of sounds and so, so on. Uh, you got me yeah. curious. Yeah. 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 OK. <laughs> so this, this uh, tune is called uh, Black Sugar, Yeah. which uh, my wife, lovely wife, Shaha named. <laughs> Your, it's family, your family is responsible for a lot for, for, of for a lot of yeah i'm really uh, yeah. grateful for all their support yeah. so, <laughs> thank you yeah so this is a, a black sugar
You know, even though we're all sitting here in one place, everyone's everyone's at home. Music is an act of travel, and what you just did was travel. Um, I was thinking of the original favorite thing from Rodgers and Hammerstein on Broadway, and then of course that beautiful John Coltrane version, and now Ariana Grande, and now you've taken it back somewhere else. So that's uh, that's lovely. It's nice to think of all those journeys that you make, um, and now we actually do go back all the way to the beginning of the sitar. Absolutely, yes. We go back 700 years. We go to years. the 13th century and Correct. Amir Khusro. Amir Khusro. Um, tell us a little bit about that. So um, this one is like a tribute to uh, Amir Khusro, um, um, a very eclectic personality uh, and uh, worked with many different uh, um, cultures and uh, was a pioneering influence in India. Uh, he invented the sitar. He's credited uh, to have invented a lot of um, um, rags. Uh, and of course, we all uh, know about Kavali. He was invented by Hazrat Amir Khosro. He brought the ghazal um, into uh, in Hindustani music. And uh, so one of the like wonderful things that hap happens in Indian music is called tarana. And tarana yeah. is, uh, while I'm, I will keep tuning as well while I'm talking. <laughs> So, tarana is somewhere where you don't have to speak a language, mm. but you use words and sounds. Uh, for example, tana derena, deen tana derena, der der da. So these are all like syllables uh, which don't actually mean anything. I mean, it mean now they mean something yeah. in music. So uh, I mean, it is believed that uh, Amir Khusro was um, working. With, um, his father had lived in India for like a one generation. So he was like this next generation. And, and we are going back in 12th century. So Amir Khusro uh, used the tarana to bridge the gap bit of language so you can communicate. And you can have musicians from different parts of India and, and you know, like, and work together mm. without the, the language mm. barrier. So mm. I, it was like a very a pioneering idea. Mm. And so in this composition, which is called uh, Khusro's Footsteps, uh, I am. Uh, I use a tarana that I composed, uh, inspired by uh, Amir Khusro. I use uh, inspiration from one of the melodies that he has composed, which is called Chap Tilak, which is of again course. a beautiful uh, Sufi yeah. song. Uh, Let's go back to the source.
beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, this song is my childhood, my adulthood, everything. It's been there throughout. You know, it reminds me of sitting with yes. my parents in the courtyard, listening to music. My first introduction to music, actually. Um, I've heard this tune forever. So Absolutely. These are like yeah. uh, what we call Sada Bahar. Sada means forever. And Bahar means spring, mm. forever spring, like, you know. Forever and, spring. And you have these nuggets in all different styles of music. Yeah. So I thought just like that um, uh, Ariana Grande song, uh, this was like a take on a, on a very different. Yeah. And I, I, I use my own composition, which yeah. is a tarana, yeah. uh, that follows that tune. Now I'm sure uh, everyone who's listening felt themselves moving in that old way that, w you know, that yeah. it reminded me of. And, and it's funny that I was taken back to childhood because actually, your next track, and I'm really happy that you, you've chosen to do this one, uh, is very much linked to that because I remember we were working on a different project completely, That's right. uh, you and I, a few years ago on a musical tribute to Shahrazad, <laughs> Shahrazad. Um, the storyteller of all storytellers of the Thousand and One Nights. And uh, then we got talking about lullabies and how maybe the first time that we ever hear music is a lullaby, is our mothers absolutely, singing to us. Absolutely. And that's the first time we come into contact with yes. music. And then you took that away. I love that you did that. Uh, I mean, when you say that, uh, right now my hairs are standing. Mm -hmm. The concept that the first music and the stories we hear is from our mothers. So, uh, and that is, uh, uh, as you very much wanted to honor that, and so did I. And uh, we talked about, can we have lullabies? and find different lullabies in different traditions, but then I thought, of la inspired by the concept of lullaby, I thought, why don't I actually write a lullaby myself for my own mother? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So this is in honor for my mother. Yeah, I'm almost by him. I wish I could reach out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I know she passed. Uh, she, it was exactly six years yesterday when she passed.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Suresh. That, that was beautiful in composition, but also in gesture, because what could be more moving than a child writing a lullaby for their parent? Um, yes. And I know that, you know, for, all, for many of us right now, what this pandemic has done is just made us understand what's valuable to us, the people we love, who are not always where we are. And so thank you for, you know, holding that moment. Th th thank you for uh, showing that love and <laughs> understanding that love and uh, for all your support and, uh, and inspiration. This uh, uh, piece really came out from your idea of lullaby. So thank you so much. Well, night has fallen and this is a beautiful way to end. So thank you old friends and new for joining us. Um, I'd like to say thank you so much for bringing Wayfinder into the world. God knows we need it now. Yes. Wayfinder is in this oh. moment. And also I think, um, you know, I'd like to say that artists right now are an essential service. Uh, we're all turning to art, whether it's film or books or music for levity or solace. So I'd like to underline that. I'd like to also give a big shout out to the Indian Summer Festival Absolutely. crew who worked Absolutely. so hard to make this happen. Absolutely. Uh, the folks at East India Carpets and the incredible uh, team at McMedia for their patience and their good cheer in, in helping us put all this together and stream to you. Um, so please do support Mohammed's work Thank um, you. by buy buying the album. The link is, is there. And if you think you'd like to see us do more like this, uh, make sure that artists get paid, crew get paid, and we bring you things for free. Support Indian Summer Festival. Um, we will continue to create and continue to bring you fantastic events. Thank you. And until we can meet again in person, um, see you on your screen. I would like to say some thank yous, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, of and, um, uh, I would really like to thank um, uh, my wife, Shaha, and my daughter, Arzu, and my whole family for their incredible support and ideas. And, and one thing that I learned that like how easy it is to learn from young people like my daughter. You know, like that's the that's something that is always humbling and, and as a teacher I always think that the teacher learns a lot while, while you're teaching yeah. so it's really, really I'm really thankful for that um, and also I really want to thank my wonderful musicians you heard Ustad Shabazz Hussain on Tabla um, wonderful very inspiring um, also you heard the wonderful wonderful multi-talented multi-instrumentalist uh, Curtis Andrews uh, on the Mbira um, the Murdangam and the Kanjira and also on the bass, we had Jean Say, uh, Sebastian Le Duje. So thank you for all these uh, wonderful musicians uh, for bringing their own colors. And also, again, I want to thank Adam for his wonderful work um, as a producer. I uh, really appreciate it. I would like to thank uh, Creative BC and Factor Foundation. And uh, again, I cannot thank you enough, Sirish, my brother and the Indian Summer Festival. Uh, it is so important that uh, the work that we do, uh, like really sometimes you guys lift us and just give that hope and you know inspiration to continue. So I'm very, very grateful. Thank you very much, Tirish. Many thanks. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.